My name is Gavin Evans and this is my review of Phantom of the Open. Open, not opera. Anytime I type in the title of this movie, it auto corrects to opera and it drives me nuts. Open, not opera, Phantom of the Open. But anyways, I heard great things about this movie, but what really got my attention is that it's written by Simon Farnaby, who also wrote Paddington 2. And if you know me, you know I absolutely love Paddington 2. So I didn't went to this movie, I went out and bought it because I was so certain I'd love it. I have to say I didn't love it. I think it's a very mediocre movie. It didn't do as much for me as I really wanted it to. But let's begin talking about the positives. And I really do like the story being told here of a man who's absolutely awful at golf, but who just doesn't give up and keeps trying simply because he wants to. And I love how that motivates people to keep trying and to not give up as well. There was a genuine feel-good element to this movie that I really dug. And I just love how this movie is unabashedly heartfelt. It wears its heart on its sleeve. And I love that about this movie. I also love the musical score by Isabel Waller-Bridge. I think it really elevates certain moments. And I also really like the soundtrack. It has a bunch of great songs and it really adds a much needed personality to this movie. Like it does have energy and this movie does have a vision. But that said, I don't think the vision was executed as good as it could have been. Like the constant camera rips became a bit too much after a certain point and they kept using them time and time again. And some of the editing choices just didn't work for me in any way like it constantly goes to this spectrum of lights and I just don't get why that was needed. I also don't think the script was all too great. You know I like everything that's here that's present in the movie about this guy who wants to play golf, his relationship with his wife, his relationship with his kids. I love the ideas of all of that and what they're trying to do but it just feels very half-assed. Like you've got this main character Maurice, I think I pronounced that properly, probably not, but anyways, he gives up on his dreams to raise his kids, and they just don't touch on that nearly enough, and the relationship between him and his wife Jean is really heartfelt, but I just wanted more scenes with them. You know, she doesn't feel as important as the movie tries to tell us she is in the end. I wish she was in the movie more and that she had a bigger role. I also found the one son, Mike, to be severely underdeveloped and he just feels more like a cliche than an actual character. And, okay, slight spoiler warning, but I don't buy the sudden change in heart he has at the very end of this movie. I wish they spent more time fully fleshing him out. I also found the way this movie progresses to be very odd. Like, there's a clear goal of Maurice wanting to play in the British Open. And he tries time and time again. So it's clearly established as the main goal of what the main character has to do. But then comes just a certain point where the movie just abandons that plot and throws it away and it feels very jarring. You know, we end up getting this big award ceremony for the last act and there's just no real payoff to what the main story was setting up. You know, I get that it's trying to be character focused, but you can wrap up the character arcs and the story with tying it all together. And here, it just feels like the characters broke away from the main story. So there's definitely a disconnect. So now when I look back on the rest of the movie, I'm just thinking to myself, well, what is the first and second act building up to? Him getting recognized as this good guy? Doesn't work for me as much. There was this one scene where... He's in the British Open and he gets caught, but they just let him stay. And that should have been the big climax. So just the way the story went about didn't really work for me. And I do think the emotional beats feel very telegraphed. You know, that you can just... Every movie uses a formula. Every movie is trying to emotionally manipulate you. And it only takes me out of it when you can see right through the movie and what it's trying to do instead of actually getting invested in it. And here, what it was trying to do feels very telegraphed. I also think the cast wasn't all too impressive. Mark Rylance can be a really good actor. I'm one of the very few people on the planet who thinks he actually deserved his Oscar for Bridge of Spies over Sylvester Stallone and Creed. Hot take, I know. But I just feel like everything he does in this movie is nothing we haven't seen from him already. 
I'm actually starting to feel like he's just playing the same character time and time again, and I'm kind of getting tired of it. I feel like whenever I see Mark Rylance is in a movie now, I know exactly what I'm going to get from him. You also got Sally Hawkins, who is a fantastic actress. You know, I don't like Shape of Water all too much, but she's great in it. And I also thought she was great in the Paddington movies, and I feel like she needs big old movie roles because she really is talented, and she just doesn't have enough to do here. You also got Jake Davies, who once again doesn't have enough to work with. And then you've got Christian Lees and Jonah Lees, who I found to be very entertaining. Whenever they were dancing in this movie, I was really enjoying it. And the rest of the cast left no impact whatsoever. I do quickly want to bring up Paddington 2 again, because that is such an incredibly well-written and well-directed movie. And you can see similarities between this movie and that one, but Paddington 2 just pulled it off a lot better. Like in Paddington 2, every character, no matter how big or small, they stand out. Every character and relationship is filled with heart and it utilizes it to the fullest potential, whether it's Paddington with his family, the grumpy neighbor and the newsstand lady, or uh, Knuckles McGee and Paddington, just every relationship you get somewhat invested in. They also use setup and payoff in an absolute masterful way, and it's absolutely stylish in a way that just really elevates it. And I just feel like this movie is nowhere near that level. But I did enjoy this movie enough. You know, it's a movie that makes you feel warm inside, it makes you happy, it makes you joyful, and that doesn't go unnoticed. It's got a nice little story, but I just feel like it could have been so much more. You know, there's clear talent on display, and it's just not getting utilized to the fullest of its potential. I wanted more from the characters and their relationships. I wanted the story to follow through on what was set up. I wanted a bit more from the cast, and for Mark Wylands to give us a different performance than what we've already seen from him. So, it's fine enough, I recommend it barely, but it had potential to be so much more. So, I'm going to go ahead and give Phantom of the Open a 5 out of 10 with a slight recommendation. Okay, have you seen Phantom of the Open? What did you think about it? Let me know in the comments down below. Make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe. Stay tuned for some more videos soon, and Gavin out.